Well, the managing director of London department store Harrods says the store is deeply sorry for failing employees who claim they were sexually assaulted by its late owner, Mohammed Al Fayed. Joining me now is Sky News contributor and GB News host Emily Carver. Emily, this has been a huge story this week and now an investigation has been launched. What's the latest? Yeah, it's a, a pretty grim story. The police in the UK, they're issuing a call for any more potential victims of Mohammed Al Fayed to come forward to the police as soon as possible. Currently, five women we know have come forward claiming rape. Many, many others have come forward claiming sexual assault. There is now a suggestion, though, that the police received 19 claims, up to 19 claims, but they didn't follow up at the time. Claims of potential corruption now between Al Fayed. Harrods as well, and even the police. Why weren't these women listened to at the time? And why was nothing done about this if it was so widespread? The current managing director, obviously a very difficult time for him. It is very much a new leadership, um, but he's apologized for all of the past failings. He said the business failed colleagues. and But the problem is there are so many questions now that remain. And of course, Mohammed Al Fayed died last year at the age of 94. So there will never be any real justice. No, clearly not, uh, but I'm sure a big investigation regardless. Now, look, this is fascinating. More than 100 artists, curators and art historians are pleading for two activists who hurled tomato soup at Van Gogh's sunflowers painting in London to be spared a jail sentence. There they are, wreaking havoc, being serial pests as usual. Emily, are these artists, I wonder, then OK with Just Stop activists attacking their work? Would they have the same opinion if the shoe was on the other foot or just when it comes to paintings like this one? I mean, presumably they should be if they want to be consistent at all. At all. Um, but this is such a 2024 story, isn't it, in Britain? <laughs> uh, we, are, we are pretty bonkers. It's, it's quite insane. <laughs> I mean, these artists are so woke that they're defending vandals who choose to trash some of the finest artwork the world has ever seen. Uh, and these two spoiled, entitled, so-called activists, I mean, they're basically children, chose to hurl this tomato soup at Van Gogh's sunflowers. Now, this is obviously, to most people, a hugely iconic piece of artwork. And people who spend their lives painting, producing artwork for a living, are actually backing these types of criminals, because they are. And apparently, they say, this act was in keeping with the ethos of the arts. I mean, I do wonder what Van Gogh would think. I'm sure Van Gogh would not be impressed, but you're right. When the woke starts defending the woke, God help our society. Let's pivot to the royals now. Prince Harry, as we know, recently turned 40 and Buckingham Palace shared birthday wishes for him. But, Emily, it's now been revealed that the Princess of Wales was the driving force behind the well wishes. Why? This is very interesting, isn't it, to hear that Princess Catherine is actually the one who wants to reach out to Prince Harry. But, I mean, I don't mean any offence to men, but this doesn't actually surprise me because it does so often fall to the women in the family mm. to keep families together, to keep the lines of communication open when there is uh, disruption, disagreement, problems, resentment, etc., etc. I wonder if going through the cancer scare, going through months of chemotherapy may have given Princess Kate uh, perhaps a, a bit of a fresh perspective on how important family is. I mean, of course, she already knows how important family is, but perhaps it made her feel as though, yes, Harry has disrespected her and the royal family so many times now. Uh, and even though there is this ongoing feud between the brothers, that actually she wants to try, at least try, to put those resentments in the past and try to, you know, reach out with an olive branch. But it's going to be very difficult. But also we hear that it wasn't only the social media post, but there was actually a phone call that Princess Kate gave Harry a phone call and also a thoughtful gift. That's what sources inside are saying. So clearly she is trying to turn a, a turn a leaf on this on this fractured relationship. I just hope Harry was was as pleasant in return. Yeah, well, the, we, we don't know when it comes to Harry, do we, what, uh, what he's going to be like. But this is interesting as well because a new report claims that Meghan Markle's staff are terrified of her and that she, quote, belittles people and doesn't take advice. Emily, has Meghan responded to these claims? 
Well, she's responded in kind. Uh, she's been uh, briefing the magazines very much with the reverse. Staff are coming forward to these US magazines saying, no, no, no. She was a fantastic boss, heaping praise on Meghan Markle. No better boss out there. So what we've got is very much conflicting and also contradictory briefings coming out on what Meghan Markle actually was like as a boss. On the one hand, you've got claims Meghan's some kind of demon boss. She's a dictator in high heels. She's prone to psycho moments and the like. On the other hand, she's the best boss in the world. But what we do know is that they found it very difficult to hold on to senior staff, haven't they? We know that there were bullying allegations at the palace when they were working royals. And we know that a Spotify executive decided to come out publicly to call them grifters. So I guess it's up to, up to the public, up to you and I to decide who we believe. Well, I certainly don't believe the Sussexes uh, at all, as usual, Emily. Emily Carver, good to see you. Thanks for joining us as always. Thank you.